And so then what is then compared to that? What is colonizer criticism? How does that come into, I guess, how does that distinguish itself against what we want ideally from cultural criticism? I'll start with that one. Um, I, I actually started thinking about colonizer criticism after reading Bell Hooks um, and just diving into everything that she wrote about film and, and, and feminism and black women, especially, you know, the oppositional gaze, you got, you really need to read about the oppositional gaze. It's really great. But um, she wrote about how cultural critics can be dangerous. Mm. And I'm like, what, wait a minute, we're just, uh, we're bookworms. And, 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 you know, we sit in the theater, how can we be dangerous? Because um, your intent, if your intent is, is to be opportunistic about it, about what you're you're engaging in about the 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 films the the music whatever it is then you know there is a, a risk of um misinforming mm. and of dropping into this trap of trying to dominate uh, you know and then when you drop into that trap of trying to dominate that's when you go into this colonizer mode um that we all know and so um and diving deeper into that you know um I'll use the example that she uses is Christopher Columbus about, you know, he came over, you know, there's this legend, this, this story we know of, you know, Christopher, Christopher Columbus came to America and discovered it after <laughs> slaughtering a bunch of people and stealing a bunch of stuff and wrecking a bunch of things. Okay. Then he claimed some stuff. That's what happened. Um, and, and then he like, and then that started a whole, you know, um, wave of, of colonizers coming over and taking from the indigenous people. She actually talks about the African cultures that came before, you, you know, way before Christopher, Christopher Columbus, who came and interacted with the, the indigenous cultures in, in America and then went back home mm -hmm. and everybody was live. And everybody still had their culture here in America, you know, and, and there was, and, and so, you know, the fact that that would that happened, but as soon as, you know, you had this, you know, white imperialist uh, idea come over, it was, it was done. It was the raps. That was the end of all these people. Um, and to me, that's what colonizer criticism is. When you, as a critic, you get this idea that your, what you think, what you say about a, about a film dominates everyone else's. Mm then you're just going through and you're eradicating and destroying everybody else's voice. You're silencing people. You're telling people, no, your stuff is trash. And, and, you know, um, which, ha which does happen if you're on social media and you follow, just follow film Twitter for like a day. Um, oh, yeah. You'll see it, you know, and, and, and it's, it decimates uh, the, the conversation, you know, and it, and it puts a rift between the audience, the audience and the critic and, and the art that is really really devastating as well so um colonizer criticism is just having that columbusing idea as a critic that your words are the end all be all of, of, mm -hmm. of it all and um around the time i was like reading and diving into bell hooks i actually saw this conversation happen on and on uh twitter where there were two white critics talking about a film and saying that, you know, that was not getting reviewed well by the uh, the public at all. I don't think anybody was watching it. I think it bombed at the box office. But it was like an Oscar bait. It was one of those Oscar bait films. And y'all know what I mean. But it's like got the cinematic everything and, and it talks about the film itself and it's got the right people in it, you know, um, that, that gets the, the Oscar. But the audience didn't like it. And so this one white critic said to the, the other, well, people have to learn to eat their cinematic vegetables. And I'm like, before they get their dessert. And I'm like, so you're going to force feed, you want fo to force people to watch a movie because, it, because you know, that's what they, they need to see, according to you. Um, that's an experience they have to have because you had it and you think that that's your, you coming from your own corner of the world your own small, you know, universe. And you're saying, this is something that I'm going to force everyone else mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to experience because you who are small enough not to even fit on the pie chart of people on the planet, um, 
you're you're because you want that you you think that your idea is dominant in what you saw and what you think of what you saw is is better than anybody else's opinion and i think that um that exchange right there in the cinematic vegetables that that to me is called that 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 embodies colonizer criticism to me the fact that you think that you this one person can force mm -hmm. every viewer to watch something because you think it's good it's so wrapped you, up in oh i'm sorry go ahead star oh and, and i was gonna say when you don't have the self-awareness enough to to understand that maybe i don't even understand some of the, the nuances and, and, and cultural epithets of this film needed to really be able to view it from a truly critical lens. Mm -hmm. it, it's so wrapped up in arrogance and elitism because so many people, maybe they don't have access to the things. It's just mm -hmm. the irony of that, eat your cinematic vegetables. It makes me think of underserved communities that have food deserts. Yes. Maybe there are no vegetables in our, in our hood, you know? Mm -hmm. And just not even taking those type of, things into consideration that's an interesting choice to eat your cinematic vegetables mm -hmm. well maybe, maybe we're in a, we might be in a cinematic food desert you never know yeah, right <laughs> well and, and and you know there are certain theaters that won't play certain movies exactly right mm -hmm. uh so what festivals if, that won't pick up certain movies exactly. there you go and so you know what if we are in that cinematic food desert where i can't get it then what exactly then what well there's no consideration for that Add too from a behind the scenes perspective, there are times where there are certain movies where they might do a press junket and they don't invite anybody that's not exactly like the, the top tier press, right? Mm -hmm. Like like a Vanity Fair or Vogue, but they don't invite like the smaller or the urban, which is independent. They, I mean, they're yeah. straying away from that word, but that's what we're looked at as, right? And they don't mm -hmm. invite us, so that's another thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. they totally forget the in, the independent press, mm -hmm. so we don't get to see it before it comes out mm -hmm. maybe there's it, no screener you know um right yeah and then so what do we do then well there's no consideration for that because in this one white guy's world or these two guys in their world everybody has access because they have access and they don't look mm -hmm. at the fact that no one and and so, and so um when you when you <laughs> when you consider that and consider that the, all of these uh, white critics, uh, well, not all of them, a, a lot of these white critics out there are still going under that impression that they, their idea of what is a good film is, is, is what stands. If they say something mm -hmm. is trash, it, it's trash. If they say something is good, it's good. Um, this whole Spider-Man um, Oscar thing, that whole conversation, that that's another one that i think is steeped in colonizing criticism because saying that a movie that that made a billion but billion dollars if it made a billion dollars that means the audience that means all of these people all over the planet thought that this was a good movie you know um so it had to be millions of people you know um I, i'm not good at math but you know it had to be you know tens of millions at least of people that said this is a good movie because they spent their money on it right and so that needs some kind of consideration for awards right something i mean I, it, i'm not going to say best picture but shouldn't we couldn't we like make a category for something like that or a special mention because even though the critics are saying no it's not a good movie it's not a movie it's not best picture it's not good it's got problems it's got this it's got that but tens of millions of people said that it didn't though so mm -hmm. we're we got to reconcile that somewhere and there again is that elitism and that and access mm -hmm. to things when you look at i'll just well i'll just make up a name let's say the movie's called hausa and it's about a very specific group of people from a country who were maybe royalty maybe they won't it ignores the the point of view from those who are impoverished people who suffered under the imperialism people who benefited from the imperialism and it doesn't leave room for any of those discussions and so when you have critique of a film this Halsa, we'll call it, that's the name of the Bobby Pins next to me on my desk. So I'll just use that <laughs> as a name. And, and so when you offer critique, then it's, oh, you're just not intelligent enough to understand mm -hmm. it. And or I, if and you I like it and they don't, they kind of look at that like, oh, you're not smart, like you just said, yeah. You're not cultured enough to understand yeah. what this is. It has nothing to do with that because I could present an opposing movie, like say I'm from Los Angeles, like Boys in the Hood, where, People say, oh my God, that doesn't happen. And it absolutely does. 
And, you know, with that colonizer critique, if they've never experienced it or lived in that world, of course, it's not relatable. And so the knife cuts both ways and they never see it that way. No. Oh, like, can you, like, you know, it really grinds my gears. This might be kind of random, but like, so I'm a theater kid, right? Like, but I, I'm from Harlem as well. So I grew up immersed in hip hop culture, but also like going to magnet schools, of course, doing like the Broadway and stuff like that. And so like, dance movies right let's be real like we see these dance movies who are the stars these these white men these white women that grow up in the hood and i i swear to god that grinds my gears like <laughs> i watch them being a fan of dance and theater but then it's like i see the stuff that they're doing coming from the world of like dance competitions whether it's a street competition or an organized competition and i'm just like this is just so stupid and fake um mm -hmm. and i think that's a good example as well of like Col not necessarily colonizer criticism, but when colonizers, well, no, colonizer criticism, because a lot of times those movies tend to get like good ratings or good reviews, mm -hmm. but they don't discuss the nuances that that don't make sense. Mm -hmm. Right, and and that's the problem. It, it 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 closes that door to where we can't talk about. It's, Star can't go in and be like, okay, y'all, y'all need to. Okay, here's another perspective. Y'all need to look at this film from because it's problematic, or you know. I don't get to say, okay, I like the film, but there is, we were talking about um, a film before we got on here about, um, I, I, I like the film, but it does have its issues. Mm -hmm. it, with colonizer criticism, you don't get to do that. You get, you get to say, you know, um, you have to defer to whoever the leading voice, the loudest voice is. Um, and that's it, usually a white guy, you know, and, and the, and go from there. And if you, de you, de you know, kind of go away from that in any way, uh, or you say, no, I don't, I don't like it. Like, um, I'll just say it Belfast. It's a, it's a Oscar worthy movie. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody likes it. To me, it's white boys behaving badly. It, that's a whole coming of age trope. Um, and I talk about it on the black Kate magazine. Um, I, it's, I don't, I don't think it should be up for anything. I don't, I don't <laughs> understand the, the, anything around it. But there is a white critic who told me that, who said in, you know, this chat that we were in, um, that it reminds him a lot of growing up um, when he was younger. And I'm like, okay. So he's like, that's why it's a good film. I'm like, no, <laughs> you can't just. <laughs> so then Boys in the Hood should get an Oscar too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, a lot of exactly. growing up. Shoot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, well, um, so, so I'm just like, I just, I, I think that it, it closes the door on, on on conversation that we should be having, and it doesn't allow for uh, cultural criticism at all. Mm -hmm. And I think I think that's the point. I think that kind of is the point, right? I um, mean, yeah, I shut out voices. Agree. And I think mm -hmm. what's interesting too is um, in the way that it's framed too, the way that the these critics who basically enable this white supremacist capitalist patriarchal like concept taking that from bell hooks yeah, um say all the words yeah <laughs> <laughs> which she, you know which she didn't there's you know she has an essay about how anyway that's that's sidetracked um is that this coming back to the columbus essay is this idea that the way columbus wrote about meeting the indigenous peoples first is the way he framed their openness to communication their openness to sharing their the way they live so that they might survive in this in this land that's new to them. He viewed it as weakness. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I, I feel like there's a that's another uh, aspect of colonizer criticism potentially oh, yeah. is that they it will be written in such a way that if you do disagree with it, you are seen as weak. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Well, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I, well, I think all the way that the, the uh, colonizer criticism is written, there's like a whole, it's almost like a format, a structure. Mm -hmm. you, they, the, the reviews look and, and, they, and sound the same way. Um, the good reviews. Mm -hmm. And, I, and <laughs> I had this experience where there was, there's a prestige um, um, film criticism magazine, I won't name it, um it's european and it's been around for so long eons and and if i if i would have gotten my name in it it would have been like instant you know, like oh my god um they told me that that i need that i wasn't 
a fit for them, but they would be willing to work with me on the way that I review films to, uh, 